Rapid Mental Health. I'm your host, Matt Kelly. I'm joined here by Dr. Neil Marinello. He is a solutions-focused life coach from Woodstock, Vermont, and a behavior expert with near six decades exploring the human condition. I've been a client of his off and on over the past two and a half decades and can speak very highly of his uh, uh, willingness to be of service. The good daddy, as he likes to uh, refer to himself. Right, Neil? Uh, yes, uh, I found that... Uh... If I put my uh, my mind in the uh, in the thought of being a good daddy to whoever I'm talking to, uh, it tends to be most helpful to my clients. Certainly works uh, for me and has worked uh, in the past. And I know that when I don't see you, I, I don't do as well. Um, our podcast series uh, is has had ten episodes, and what I like to uh, do now is kind of just recap those uh, episodes. It's as I like to refer to it as. The 10 Rules for Life from uh, Dr. Neil Marinello. It's yeah. kind of a riff on the Jordan Peterson bestselling uh, book, uh, 12 Rules for Life. And uh, as we go through and we began our podcast series, Neil, with the topic there, um, I am the most important person in the world to me. And of course, you know, that speaks a lot to ego, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs as well. And of course, you take yourself wherever you go from uh, the time of your first uh, self-realization, self-awareness up until the time you die. Uh, that's correct. And uh, self-awareness is actually quite a, uh, uh, a developmental subject. Uh, your average baby has very little self-awareness. Mm. Uh, your, uh, your average three-year-old believes that uh, uh, when he or she walks out of a room, the furniture disappears. Uh, your average uh, 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 two-year-old uh, 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 peekaboo works with, and the concept of peekaboo is uh, you can't see me. Uh, the, uh, the, it's sometimes referred to by uh, uh, advanced Freudians as, uh, as object relations. Uh, but object is just another word for, for relationships for people. Uh, uh, the average seven-year-old doesn't really uh, understand uh, other people's perspective, whereas uh, uh, it's possible for an eight-year-old to do that developmentally. Mm -hmm. Your average 12-year-old uh, cannot be paranoid. Uh, your average 13-year-old can be because it's possible to hypothesize, to say, if this, then that. Uh, a, uh, it used to be thought of that the that uh, mental development stopped around age 18, and IQ tests used to stop around that point. Uh, recent uh, uh, developments in, uh, uh, in uh, videoing um, uh, uh, the brain and brain development shows that, in fact, it, uh, a number that is closer is 25, but in fact, uh, as long as we live, there is a flexibility in the brain and a way in which the brain can change. Uh, so uh, the bottom line on it is that uh, we're, we're looking at uh, the fact that people's thinking can change continuously throughout their lives. And that means that they can change the way they behave throughout continuously throughout their lives if they can change their thinking. Mm. And our, our second topic uh, sort of deals with that as well in terms of, you know, perception in that there's no part of you that is not a part of me. And, you know, what I got gathered from that was that, you know, I have basically created you. Um, and, and while that may have no uh, basis in reality, uh, what I see out in the world, I have created. Um, and so therefore, if, you know, I disliked somebody. Well, I have created that dislike, and that is actually a reflection of me uh, more than the other person. Yeah. Another way of thinking of it is uh, everything is projection. Mm. If you think about uh, a movie projector, you have the projector over here, and you have the screen over here. So what you see over here is actually coming from here. And uh, when you when you think about that, you realize that the stronger you feel about something, the more likely it is to be you rather than what you see. Wow, that is just so intense and so deep, you know, so and and what I love about our series, again, is that each topic 
literally almost is a continual thought pattern here is our third topic of our podcast series was that each of us lives in our own reality. Again, I have created the world that I see, that I interact with, and that is my own personal reality and may be very different from uh, anyone else's and probably is. Yes, uh, probably the best research on this uh, has to do with eyewitness testimony. Uh, if you have several people who see an, an accident, you will get uh, as many stories about what happened in that accident as you have people. And that's because they not only are seeing it from different angles, they're also uh, you know, projecting what's important to them onto their observations. Mm. It doesn't mean that there isn't an outside reality. In fact, I have spent most of my life trying to understand what is real and what is not. Uh, the uh, Understanding what is true and what is not true is another goal of mine. I don't think I'll ever reach it, but I'm closer to it now than I was 10 years ago. And uh, uh, if aging doesn't affect me too much, I'm hopefully hopefully be closer to it in 10 years from now than I am now. Uh, but the, the thing that, uh, that is most important is to recognize that whatever is happening is uh, is being observed and the observer has a major influence on uh, on uh, the way they perceive it uh, so do we project onto what what we see yes do we change what we see because we're looking at it yes uh, does that mean that i can walk through the wall probably not <laughs> and then, uh, there are people who say you know in the right uh, uh, distribution of, uh, of uh, molecules. There's more nothing than there is anything that it might actually be possible to walk. Yeah, the I just uh, watched uh, the movie, The Man Who Stare at Goats over the weekend. And um, what was coming up was sort of just what you're talking about in that, again, uh, if you get down to a quantum level, again, what we see really isn't there. And that, in fact, is going to be one of our topics for our, our next uh, uh, series in our in our podcast series here, um, and and again, if you live in your own reality, that that very well may be may be possible. Um, uh, so it was it was an interesting thing because the the movie opens with you know this military guy staring at a wall and believing that the wall really isn't there, and he was going to go through the wall, and of course he didn't. <laughs> Yeah, I think that uh, uh, we have to deal with the, the fact that our beliefs have a major impact on what we see and, uh, and on what we do uh, and what we say. Uh, and uh, once you understand that, uh, that in many respects, beliefs are us, then it becomes possible to see uh, and separate out uh, reality and truth from uh, other people's perceptions. And, you know, that brings up to our next, uh, what our next uh, topic was in our series that none of us is better than anyone else. And yet, oftentimes the self-talk that each of us has uh, can be a diminishing self-talk, uh, putting oneself down against another or the ego saying, oh, that you are better. Uh, than somebody else, um, and and then that can you know inform your reality or or create your reality, um, and it's something that you know I continue to struggle with even today. Well, self talk is a major force in uh, our perceptions of reality, mm. uh, but everybody is different from everybody else. Everybody is special in the sense that uh, that uh, we all develop areas of specialty and the idea that uh, that the way of judging uh, one person against another has to do with their intelligence or has to do with uh, uh, some other variable uh, is uh, actually a projection uh, that comes from someone who thinks that this is important more important than that uh, uh, if we had a, uh, a a culture or subculture that emphasized grace instead of uh, uh, abstract reasoning we wouldn't have IQs, we'd have GQs for grace quotient. <laughs> and how smoothly we moved would have me uh, operating at a very uh, uh, deficient level. And, and again, this is 
the natural segue into what was our follow-up podcast that each of us is doing the best we can with what we have and you know internalizing that you know given the negative self-talk that any one of us has we're still trying to navigate in our own reality in the world outside that reality uh, as best we can with what we have that's correct and uh, and the self-talk is the thing which is possibly modifiable. In other words, uh, if I believe I'm doing the best I can and I see that there's a way I can do better by changing the way I believe or the way I think, then I have the opportunity to actually break the rule. And the rule is that the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Uh, the the uh, bottom line on that one is that uh, uh, that uh, the way you think determines the way you behave. Mm. And so if you can change the way you think because you see a better way for you to behave, that you can say, hey, I thought I was doing the best I could, but now there's a way I can do a little better. And then you wind up not just changing the way you think, but also changing the way you behave in the future and breaking the rule of insanity. And and that was, in fact, the, the subject of our follow-up podcast, which was the only rules controlling me are my own. And that is regardless of what uh, society may put forth as to rules of behavior regarding, you know, maybe violence or whatever. Um, uh, but it is ultimately our choice to follow those rules or not. And, and that that is my, the only thing that I can control in essence, the rules that I make for myself. And and, and, in, and in a sense, you and I have even talked about that, that sometimes that's even difficult to, to do. So the only rules that are controlling me are my own, but sometimes even that's hard to, to manifest or to, to obey. Well, all rules are uh, modifiable as, we can, as a future thing uh, that we'll talk about, a future podcast discussed the idea that in fact, uh, there are uh, no systems that are absolute, that, uh, that uh, all systems have flaws. Uh, any rules that you set also have flaws. There are no absolutes. Uh, what we can do is take a look at the rules that we set and compare them to the situation we're in at any given point in time and change those rules if they don't apply to the situation. Flexibility uh, is, from my perspective, the single most important quality to have. Mm. Uh, the rule that I have that I apply most often is don't hurt other people unnecessarily. Good rule. Um, our next uh, topic was something uh, that you had written almost more as a self rule for you, um, but it did have uh, expanding applications to you know the community and our viewership at large which was deciding when i finish the job is up to me which again uh feel, felt to me a, a a very natural progression um about rules yeah this comes down to uh a reality which i, I had to face when i was very young and uh, that is that uh, i have to live with myself and uh, uh, no one else does. Uh, so when I'm facing a situation and I feel the right thing to do is whatever uh, is driving me, which I believe is uh, what I call God. Uh, mm -hmm. I consider God to be the force for good in the universe. Uh, when I feel like I am being driven by that force for good and I feel that there's something I can do that will accomplish a, a job and finish a job uh, without hurting others unnecessarily, I do it, even though it may break other rules. Uh, the rules for psychologists, for example, are very clear, and I have broken those rules because in specific, specific situations, it didn't make sense to me because people were going to get hurt otherwise. And, and again, uh, this follows right into our next topic. Uh, our eighth uh, podcast was uh, quality of life is the only variable that matters. And I can see how that totally jives with what you just said, that, you know, 
you had to decide when to finish the job or break the rule because perhaps you could not have lived with yourself had you not. And that would have been a quality of life issue that you would have had to carry around with yourself uh, going forward. That's correct, yes. Uh, quality is, is one of the ruling forces in my life. Uh, I look for quality uh, in, uh, in specific areas that I feel I can achieve it. Other, other areas, it doesn't especially matter. The other concept is good enough. Uh, in other words, if I can uh, get a, a good enough uh, job done in a particular situation that's not that important to me, I'm fine with that. But when it comes to the job that I have, which is helping people change for the better, uh, I look for quality and I'm always working on improving myself. My definition of a professional is somebody who's better at what they're doing now than they were uh, a month ago and will be better a month from now than they are now. You never get perfect. Mm. Um, our ninth uh, topic was um, that all human systems are flawed. You just uh, spoke about it. Um, and this is, uh, I, I love it. And I, 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 I love it be in our 10 best rules for life, uh, if you can, in that, if you go out there with that understanding, uh, it can bring about less conflict or less frustration, I think, on the, the individual. Uh, who is acting within their own reality, but has to deal with systems or rules that society has made uh, in order to try to, again, not be evil and not do harm, um, but that all human systems are flawed. And, and if you can accept that, uh, grace probably is, is more readily available. Yes, yes, because... Uh... When you accept that all systems are flawed, and again, human systems versus systems, as you pointed out uh, in our podcast, uh, nature is, potent is potentially some a system that is not flawed. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, when you accept that all human systems are flawed, uh, you can escape the trap of absolutes. Uh, the idea that absolutes apply uh, it's one of the concerns that I have about the concept of ethics. Ethics is what other people tell me I should do in a situation they've never been in before. Wow. Uh, the truth is that everything is situation ethics. Uh, and therefore, I change the subject to morals. There's a right thing to do in any situation. It depends on that situation. And uh, if I do it, I feel good about myself. If I don't do it, I have to deal with uh, the self-talk that, uh, that can result in shame and in my uh, deciding how I'm going to change my behavior in the future. Uh, but accepting that all systems are flawed allows me to, uh, to look at, the, at any situation I'm in uh, from the perspective of what are all the variables operating at this point on this fact. And that's where the, the Basque concept comes in. Uh, in any videotape, you can look at it over and over again and separate out who's doing what, what the behaviors are. Uh, the A is for affect, which is another word for emotion. Uh, what is each person feeling and mad, sad, glad, or scared. Uh, the S is the sensations, what are the, uh, the actual senses that are involved, uh, whether it's uh, seeing or hearing or touching or, uh, or smelling or, uh, or tasting. Uh, and uh, the K is the knowledge. If you watch it over and over again, you will get a picture that, uh, that has the entire uh, factor with all the variables and all of the people involved in their feelings and, and thoughts. And that, from my perspective, is what I seek to, uh, to achieve in any situation. The bottom line on that one, though, is, of course, uh, you have to operate in the moment. And in the moment, your best bet is to take into account uh, what's happening now and that all there is is now. Mm -hmm. And to understand that, that if included in now is the way in which the past is affecting your perception of the present, and that gives you the, the uh, opportunity to change the future. Wow, wow. And, you know, our final topic to me sort of encapsulated it all. If that all human systems are flawed and people are acting 
within their own reality where they are the most important person to them, that you really need to trust people to be themselves rather than having expectations uh, uh, that they are going to act maybe as you would act or, or have the intelligence that you would have. Um, that to me seems like, again, a recipe for frustration or conflict, um, unless, again, you can trust people to be themselves. Well, people tell you who they are. People behave in certain ways. You, if you observe it, and if it surprises you in one way or another, uh, at least from my perspective, that's a flaw that I have. Uh, I need to understand uh, what's going on in that person's mind uh, when he or she is acting in the way they are acting. And, uh, uh, and they are explaining it to themselves as the best they can do under those circumstances. Uh, and if I can't get inside their head well enough to understand how they're explaining it to themselves, I feel that I am failing. So I work very hard to understand uh, uh, who a person is and, uh, and therefore I can trust them to be themselves. If I don't feel like uh, I can understand what they're saying to themselves while they're doing or saying whatever it is they're saying, uh, then uh, from my perspective, I don't, I'm not getting them. And my job is to get them. Uh, you can't change somebody if you don't understand their self-talk, if you don't understand what the announcer inside their head is saying to them while they're doing whatever they're doing. We're uh, discussing uh, the 10 rules for life uh, from Dr. Neil Marinello. It's important to note that uh, these are uh, tweets from Dr. Neil. Uh, you can follow the good doctor on Twitter at Coach Dr. Neil. And as the curator and the host for the podcast, I have been the one who's been selecting the order and the topics. So while as much as I like to say that these are the 10 rules for life for, for Dr. from Dr. Neil Marinello, in a sense, you might say that these are my 10 rules for life based on the tweets of Dr. Neil because you certainly haven't put them in this order. Uh, uh, so I do take full responsibility that this is a direct reflection of me as much as it is of you. And I appreciate that. Uh, the, the process that we seem to have developed during these podcasts is very much one of cooperation and uh, 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 as with all my clients, uh, the client leads what we talk about. Uh, uh, however, I always react uh, with what feels right to me at the moment. And uh, uh, that's what I think these podcasts are an example of. Nice. And so as we move away from these 10 rules for life, so to speak, I feel that the next 10 uh, episodes are an opportunity for us to dive a little bit deeper into some of the basic tenets that we've discussed here in the first top 10 uh, uh, basic uh, facts for life. And um, the, if you looked at the order that I sort of sent you, it's, it's a lot about, again, perception defining reality, which is creating your thoughts or, or even that's a little bit backwards, that your perception is informing your thoughts, which creates your reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There is a, uh, uh, an interesting uh, tenet that I have, uh, which I'm not sure we've discussed and, and might be worthy of a future podcast. Uh, uh, it is, there are no grownups. <laughs> And I really believe that uh, at any given point in time, whatever a person is doing uh, is being controlled by uh, a child, uh, a child who is pretending to be grown up in one way or another. And some children are much better at faking it than others. Uh, but uh, for those of us who have at one time or another uh, experienced trauma, uh, often the uh, the child who was at the age that that trauma uh, occurred uh, can be running the show. Yeah. And that child is operating from the perspective of, as we talked about before, uh, the developmental age. So if uh, at age three, uh, somebody uh, gets stuck in one way or another, then you have uh, the person that is driving the bus of the, that's got all the other 
things that have been learned over time, uh, other, uh, other children uh, sitting on the bus. But if a three-year-old is driving the bus, the bus is being driven by somebody who believes the furniture disappears when he walks out of the room. Uh, and uh, uh, Freud referred to that as a narcissistic stage. Uh, but the, the uh, uh, reality is there are others in that on that bus who can drive it. On the other hand, if they come up and say, hey, you know, uh, I got a driver's license, the three-year-old may say, oh yeah, where the hell were you when I had to drive this bus? So the controlling child uh, is often the person that needs to be understood and shown some other ways of thinking uh, that will help them to mature and to allow uh, uh, maturity to take place. Mm. Taking a look at some of the upcoming uh, episode topics, uh, they include uh, what I see is not what's there, reality exists, meaning is interactive, uh, no two people think alike, uh, and your thinking reveals your belief system. So again, we're, we're really going to be going deep here on how perception informs thinking and it creates your reality and hopefully in these next 10 episodes we'll be able to convey to the viewer and the and the listener that you do have the opportunity and the ability to change your perception and your thinking and hence your reality that's very exciting and yeah. i look forward to it there's nothing I like more than getting in depth. And uh, uh, in shrink school, I was voted the most flexible. And, uh, and I'm always open to uh, others' perceptions and the possibility that I might be wrong. Uh, at the same time, getting deeper and deeper into any specific situation enables me to actually be flexible enough to understand how you think and other people think. And of course, how I think, because it's a, it's a loop. Wonderful. We've been speaking with Dr. Neil Marinello, examining our last 10 topics here in our podcast series, topics that I like to call his 10 basic rules for life. Again, that's my designation for him. A reminder that you can follow the good doctor on Twitter and, and examine some of his tweets personally in depth. His uh, handle is at uh, Coach Dr. Neil. We invite you to give these uh, podcasts a like and perhaps subscribe and share them with those who you think uh, might benefit. Uh, uh, we invite you to join us on our next podcast where again, the series topic will be, what I see is not what's there. It's uh, definitely uh, a great podcast that you're not gonna wanna miss because it deals with perception, thinking and reality. Neil, your final thoughts? Uh, I'm very much enjoying this process, Matt, and uh, uh, I hope that, uh, uh, that others will also. Uh, I'm available for anybody who would like to talk to me. Uh, all you have to do is, uh, is call, and uh, uh, I pick up the phone anytime between 3.30 in the morning and 8 o'clock at night when I go to bed. And I can attest to that, having called him one morning just recently at 6 a.m. with a personal issue. On behalf of The Good Doctor, I'm Matt Kelly. We're both wishing you good mental health.